Hey guys, Constance here. Welcome back to Good Life Form. So you can tell by my voice, um, I brought something back with me from the conference. <laughs> oh goodness. Um, yes, I've picked up some sort of bug. I feel fine. I'll just put that out there right now. I feel totally fine. I just sound like this. So I'm drinking lots of fluids, including echinacea tea with lemon and honey. I'm doing um, all the supplements, you know, the elderberry, the zinc, the vitamin D, C, etc. And so I've got all those going on, but uh, apparently, apparently lots of people have been coming down with the bug. I mean, it's everywhere. I'm just saying. Whew, and I don't really care for this particular tea, but it's medicine, so. So, what I want to share with you today is the situation with our donkey and mule. So, we have a shelter that we had built, our original shelter, which was for goats to begin with. And then, when we got... Uh, Sophie and Amos, our mini donkey and mule, we kind of swapped them around and put the goats out in the second shelter that we built and then put uh, Amos and Sophie in the original area. And now when we had the goats in there, we had no issues, none whatsoever. Goats are smaller creatures, they're not terribly heavy, and it we didn't have any issues with where they were. However, winter has arrived, and winter here in northern Alabama tends to be a little bit damp. And Sophie and Amos are heavier animals. Their shelter faces to the east, which means in front of their shelter, um, it gets no afternoon sun, no late midday sun, and it stays shaded. And the heavier creatures cause that area that has a tendency to stay a little bit damp, they turn it into soup. It's just a nightmare. And we have been putting down layers and layers of straw, but they're so heavy, it makes no difference. It's just, it's mud. And so we decided that we needed to get them out of there. So I went to Tractor Supply uh, the other day and I, well, last week, and I picked up one of those garage in a box kits. It's basically a metal frame shelter. Uh, you can use it for storing equipment. You can use it as an animal shelter. There's a lot of things that you can use it for and it goes up fairly quickly. So I picked one up and Mr. Smith and I and our son came over and the three of us put it all together. And we were working until evening. We moved uh, the electric fence over and all of that. And then the following morning, Mr. Smith and I put their halters and leads on them. We walked them across to their new area, you know, walked them all along the fence line, showed them the shelter and all of that. And frankly got them out of that area. Now where we put them is basically the highest point of our property. It's an area that never gets muddy. It always dries out very quickly when we've had rain. And so we felt like that was the best spot to put them in. And they're actually, I don't know if you can see right there is the buckling shelter. And right back there is Sophie and Amos's new shelter. And it's just a temporary shelter. Um, it'll do for the time being. We are going to build another um, walk-in shed, a little mini barn for them, um, you know, a wood one. That way they'll have um, a more stable structure. But we just needed to get them out of there. Um, mud and hooved animals is not a good mix. It can lead to all sorts of problems. Um, it can lead to laminitis, it can lead to hoof rot. Um, basically, it could lead to issues that could end up being fatal to a hooved animal. And like I said, when we had the goats in that area, it really wasn't an issue. But I think because the goats are much lighter, they don't 
dig down into the soil making those pits with their hooves when it gets wet and so it was never an issue until we moved the heavier animals in there now uh, I was actually having a conversation with someone while I was at the Homesteaders of America conference um, just over this past weekend and they had a really good idea wood chips um, I am going to reach out to some places around here um, I actually know somebody who lives in my area who was able to get wood chips delivered you know I've tried the chip drop thing I've tried all of those I've never gotten anything in this area however she might have an in for me and so I'm gonna reach out see where it was she's got those got those wood chips from and see if I can get some dropped here um, because wood chips will cover up that area not sink into the ground and break down as quickly as straw would and I think that will be a major improvement to that area you know if for some reason I can't get wood chips then honestly I think I will just go to the farmers go up get a load of their undyed mulch and dump that there because it'll do the same thing but you know wood chips would be free <laughs> uh, free or very low cost although you know a load of mulch from our farmers co-op doesn't cost that much either however I would get a lot more wood chips if I had a truck just dump everything they have in their in their um, carrier area on my yard or in my yard so my plan was to do the uh, Homesteaders of America conference recap and share that on Friday. However, I don't know if I'm going to have a voice and there's hours and hours of footage. So um, I think I will plan on that video going up on Monday um, because I do actually have something else planned for Friday. And so if my voice holds up, <laughs> I will I will be sharing that then um, it we you know we had a fantastic time um, I had booked an Airbnb up there in Columbia Tennessee which is just south of Nashville there was four of us who shared the Airbnb there was um, Anna from Fermented Homestead Julie from Rowan Co Farm and Tangie from Freedom Homestead and we had a fantastic time. Uh, it was really nice having kind of a girls weekend out, although no partying, all homesteading. Um, although we did, um, we did go out to eat um, two nights, uh, the first night that we were there and then the second night. And the second night that we were there, we actually did a kind of a sit down conversation there in the kitchen. And we talked about all sorts of topics and all four of us filmed the entire uh, conversation, many topics, like I said, and we're all going to kind of figure out who's going to share what portion of it. Uh, none of us want to share the entire thing just because there is so much that we talked about. And so that way we can all kind of divvy it up, share some of the conversation, and then you can watch all four of our videos to kind of see everything that we talked about but we had a great time and we even came up an idea with a potential future collaboration which you will just have to stay tuned we're going to see if we can work out the details to do this so this week we are still kind of in the midst of a cold snap it was actually kind of beautiful during the day, it's in like the 50s, but then at night, we're getting down into the teens, which is really cold for Alabama. I mean, it's not unheard of. We do actually get cold weather here in Northern Alabama. Uh, we do actually have winters. They're just not as cold as a lot of places, and the uh, teens kind of temperatures don't stick around all, win all winter. They just kind of come and go. Um, but we've got a really cold snap that's going to be happening here over the next several days um, but next week is going to look if the weather report is correct 
it is gonna be amazing. So I actually plan on getting out here and starting to work on some of the stuff out here on the property. While I'm not going to be gardening this year, there are still projects I'm going to be doing, doing uh, some like cleanup that I'll be doing. You know, there's just, you know, the post winter cleanup that needs to happen, even though, yes, I know winter's not over yet, but I'm really looking forward to just getting out here and uh, working outside and just enjoying 50s and 60s temperatures. Mm, it'll be lovely. So that is it for today. I'm gonna head into the house and make dinner. I'm actually making a really easy recipe that I have filmed before, but I don't know if I have it on my website or not. It is a beef and cabbage dish. It's got ground beef and cabbage, some, some simple seasonings, and it is just so good. It's so good. It's one of those simple is better kind of recipes because, I mean, there's only a couple ingredients and it's just tasty. All right, so like I said, hopefully I don't completely lose my voice and I am able to film tomorrow uh, for my Friday video and all of that. I've actually got an entire list I've been working on of um, topics I wanna do videos on, which actually, hold on, let me, that reminds me. So usually on Sundays, I will send out a weekly recap newsletter. Sometimes it goes out on Monday, but it's usually Sunday. Either way, it's at the beginning of the week. And in yesterday's newsletter, I actually asked a question of all of you guys because I'm working on not just the things that I'm gonna be doing in the next few weeks, but things that I would like to touch on all throughout the year. And I asked, you know, what kind of things would you like to see more content of? Uh, whether it is YouTube videos or whether it is blog posts, you know, recipes, what have you. And I also asked if there's anything that you would want to see me do a teaching series on. So I would love to hear from all of you on that. And I've actually gotten a bunch of responses already via email. Um, if you want, you can send me an email at this address right here, or you could leave it in the comments down below, or you can message me, like private message me on Instagram, um, and just send me a message and let me know what you would like to hear or see or read or watch in the coming year, because it helps me to plan what I'm going to do, because if there's something that all of you are really wanting to learn about, then I wanna create that content for you. So that is it. Now I'm going to head into the house and make dinner. Thanks for hanging out with me here again at A Good Life Farm. My name is Constance and I will talk to you all next time.